from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. An Israeli man who was seriously injured in a terror attack Sunday has died of his injuries. 34-year-old Lidor Levy was stabbed by a Palestinian terrorist in a shopping mall in Gan Yavne Sunday night, sustaining a very serious head injury and underwent neurosurgery. But he succumbed to his injuries this morning. Another man was seriously injured and a teenager was moderately injured in the attack. The terrorist was neutralized at the scene. Israel police said today that they prevented a terror attack in Jerusalem, writing that three suspects from East Jerusalem were arrested for planning an attack on a police station and Teddy Stadium in Jerusalem with explosives and gunfire. The IDF gave an operational update today on the last 24 hours in fighting between Israeli troops and terror group Hamas in Gaza, writing that Israel's air force, directed by our troops, struck a terrorist cell and the infrastructure from which it operated in in central Gaza. And in southern Gaza, IDF troops eliminated a number of terrorists, located weapons, and struck terrorist infrastructure. The IDF also said it responded to rockets fired from Gaza into southern Israeli communities yesterday, writing that the IDF targeted several sources of the fire along with several additional launchers and terrorist infrastructure. Three more rockets were fired from Gaza at southern Israel today. No damage or injuries were reported in these recent attacks. IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said today that there was no change in instructions for Israeli civilians after Iran threatened Israel, accusing it of carrying out the airstrike earlier this week on Tehran's consulate in Damascus, where two generals of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, a U.S.-designated terrorist organization, were killed. While the IDF was reportedly on alert, Hagari said that the directives of the Home Front Command remained unchanged. Rockets continued to be fired at northern Israel with reports yesterday that a home in Shlomi was damaged, but there were no casualties there. Israeli fighter jets responded, hitting Hezbollah terror targets in Lebanon. Well, more than 180,000 letters marking 180 days of captivity yesterday of the hostages still held in Gaza were hand-delivered to the White House, urging President Joe Biden to continue to support Israel, combat anti-Semitism, and secure the release of the hostages. The initiative was led by the Orthodox Union, whose executive director, Nathan Diamond, addressed a press conference before the delivery of the letters yesterday, which he said made three essential points. One is we are asking the president to stand strong with Israel as it continues to prosecute its war against the evil Hamas terrorists. Number two, underscoring that we must do everything possible to free the hostages who have been held in absolutely unimaginable and horrendous conditions since October 7th. And number three, that with the surge of anti-Semitism that has come to the United States in the wake of October 7th, we are looking to the president and his administration and all authorities to do more to combat anti-Semitism and to keep Jews in the United States safe. The Anti-Defamation League, who helped with the campaign, noted that letters will continue to be delivered until every hostage is released from captivity, writing, we urge everyone to continue writing to the president so that we can keep up the pressure to bring them home now. The Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany, the Claims Conference, launched a new initiative today to promote Holocaust education globally. The Survivor Speakers Bureau will connect over 270 Holocaust survivors, virtually and in person, to students in schools around the world. Claims Conference President Gidon Taylor said at a moment of dramatically rising anti-Semitism, this program tells the history and educates for the future. Holocaust survivor Hannah Holston said it is one thing to read about the Holocaust in a textbook. 
it is another thing altogether to sit with someone who was deported from their hometown, stripped of everything they own, made to live in hiding, or to endure a concentration camp. If speaking directly with the few remaining survivors makes an impact for even one person, I am more than willing to participate. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, April the 4th at 7 o'clock. It's the closing session of the Anti-Defamation League's Never Is Now Summit, featuring remarks from Hillary Rodham Clinton and Merrick Garland, among others. At 9, Ehud Diskin is on L'Chaim. Then an encore presentation of Karen Dahan on Eye on Israel, speaking about the many volunteers, Jewish and not Jewish, coming to Israel to volunteer after October the 7th. And Eye on Israel is premiering next. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. I'm Yisrael Chai.